Who wants to be part of your world and what effect will they have on your life? Welcome back to Tarot and Beyond. Today's reading was actually inspired by this amazing deck that I won from a contest on Jalissa's channel. So this is one of my favorite tarot readers, Jalissa's Messages, and she does a draw every week for those who subscribe and comment on her channel. And I won one week, so she sent me over uh, this Under the Sea Tarot that she created, as well as some wax melts and this amazing super yummy smelling unicorn candle some sage and also a chakra bracelet like girl she hooked me up so i really wanted to first of all promote jalissa because i think she's an amazing reader i will leave a link to her channel in the description box below and use this amazing new deck to do this reading so we're going to be looking at who is going to be a part of your world and what kind of an effect they will have on you what is the connection between you and this person and what will they bring into your life so we actually have four groups to choose from today instead of my normal three and we're going to leave the cards turned face down until we get to each of the readings and reveal what they are on the other side so we have group one two three and four use the timestamps linked in the description box or the chapter notes below to jump ahead to your chosen reading or readings and we'll see you there all right hi group number one welcome to your reading let's find out what card you chose you have the page of swords okay so this person who's coming into your life or who wants to be a part of your world is someone who has been gazing at you from afar that's kind of what i see here it's like she's looking down into the water she's watching the magic so it feels like this person is kind of gazing at you or they're looking at you from afar that's the feeling i get i do feel as though they've kind of repressed what they want to say to you is kind of that's what i'm picking up on it's like they they have a lot to say they have they've been thinking about you a lot but they haven't necessarily come forward or said anything. So let's get a little bit more information. I think they feel... They feel... Yeah, I did just get a message that they they feel as though you wouldn't want to listen to them for some reason. So let's get some more information. Oh, we have the sun card. I feel like you're the light in their life. Whoever this person is, they really look up to you. That's that's kind of what I feel. So maybe they think that you wouldn't listen to them because they perceive themselves as lower than you in some way. I'm getting this feeling of like they think that they are of a lower class or a lower status than you, that you wouldn't be interested in talking to them, something like that. Yeah, they, they're afraid of judgment for sure. Okay, yeah. So they, they definitely feel like a lower class citizen and they see you as like royalty and they're like, there's no way that this person would want to talk to me. But um, I really have a feeling that that's just their own internalized judge judgments that they kind of need to heal from. This could have been something that they grew up with, you know, like feeling as though they're going to be judged by people or they're going to be cast out for being less than or... Yeah, just feeling like they compare themselves to other people a lot. That's kind of what I'm getting. And that's why they, I think, have internalized this fear and this resistance or repressed the, the impulse to reach out and connect in some way is because they've kind of, they've got stuck into their own mindset of self-judgment um, and they need to do some healing. That's the sun card for you. You know, the sun will tell you where you need to do healing. So let's find out a little bit more about this person. Um, they're coming up as the page of swords. So Ooh, King of Wands. Okay, so this could be a fire sign, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. This is really cool. Look at that Aquaman. I actually just, wa I'm, I'm just watching, um, what is it called? Justice League? Yeah, I just started watching Justice League and Neurofeedback. So yeah, this feels like somebody who, they're actually more powerful than they think they are. I think they significantly, yeah, Spirit just used the word drastically. They drastically underestimate themselves. They have a very warped perception of who they are. They see themselves as 
very disempowered, but I think that they actually have a lot of internal strength. Since we do have the Sun card here and the King of Wands, this could be specifically a Leo or someone who has a lot of Leo traits. So um, the, the positive side of that is confidence and pride and leadership qualities and just being very sort of talented and and capable of being in the spotlight but i think that this person is sort of in the shadow side of those things or those those qualities which would be like lack of pride self-judgment iso- self-isolation basically this person is kind of like existing underneath and they don't want to kind of come up to the surface and let themselves be seen because they feel so bad like they just feel like they're not a good person or they feel like they are unworthy that's the word i'm looking for yeah this person feels very unworthy hmm let me ask why the high priestess okay um yeah i feel like they see you I think they see you as a high priestess, male or female. It's like they see you as someone who's very, very wise and who has a lot of hidden information. You know, like they see you as someone who's very, very powerful and they see you up on this throne. You know what I mean? And and they can't kind of wrap their heads around the fact that everyone's equal and they are valuable too huh yeah i just feel like they they really don't value themselves as they should let me just find out more information though the hierophant someone taught them to not value themselves that's the message i just heard somebody taught them that they were unworthy and they believed it and they 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 internalized that judgment okay what is it i'm gonna get one more message on that justice yeah so they believe in this very imbalanced perspective of life but i think i think that overall i i just gotta say like they have they may have been raised by someone who was very snobbish that's what i'm getting it's like this person that they were raised by um could have been like a parent 555 i saw in the time there anyway they look at the the way that these two these two people are looking with their eyes they're kind of like you know, I'm so much better than you and poo-poo this and poo-poo that, you know, it's like judgment, it's judgment and internalized ego. This person may have been raised by someone like that because that's what I'm getting, specifically a mother. And this mother was highly critical and looked down on anyone who she perceived as less than. And so this person is, you know, they're, since they were raised by that individual, has, has really internalized that from a young age. And as a result, they fear that other people are going to do that to them as well. I don't think they're the type of person who does that. I think they're the type of person who fears people doing that to them. Two of Pentacles. So what they want to bring into your life or the reason that they want to come into your world in this way is because they see a lot of value in you. It's like you offer them a lot of value and on some level... They want to offer that value back as well. They, they really do believe in fairness. They believe in balance. And they have um, a very strong internalized mor- moral code. Like they, they are all about fairness. I think because they were raised in an environment that was so blatantly unfair that they kind of went the opposite direction, you know, like they overcorrected a little bit and they are hyper aware of what is fair and what is not. And so sometimes to their own detriment is what I heard. Yeah, it's almost like being loyal to a fault or or, um, maybe even a little bit self-sacrificial and that energy could be why they don't feel confident in themselves is because they kind of underplay the value that they have to offer. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. So they want to bring value. Yeah, look at that Ace of Pentacles. They want to bring value into your life, but they feel like they don't have much to offer. And they feel like you are this queen or king up on your throne and 
they're like, who am I, the pauper, to bring something to them? You know, it's like, uh, it's giving me like Aladdin vibes, you know, where Aladdin really has like a complex about the fact that he doesn't feel good enough for Princess Jasmine. And so he has to lie and tell her that he's a prince just to kind of make himself feel like he's good enough for her. But even then he, he still doesn't believe it um, because he can't keep up the lie and he finally has to admit to himself that he is worthy, but he kind of has to learn that through trial and error, like through a bit of judgment type situations <laughs> where his lies are exposed. You know, he's not lying maliciously, but it's from insecurity. So I think this person is kind of like that archetype where they want to offer you something. Yeah, they definitely want to offer you something. See Prince Eric here like feeding her cake. <laughs> It's like they want to give you something, but um, they don't feel like they have a lot to give or that you wouldn't value what they have to give you. So how is this person, how is this person interacting with you or watching you? King of Swords. Um, this is interesting because in this card, it's the statue of Eric uh, that the Little Mermaid saves from the shipwreck and she, you know, it's, she adds it to her collection. So I feel like this person, they watch you, they maybe look at your pictures online, or if you, yeah, I see them, you're posting things and they see, which is like the visage of you, you know, it's not you in person, it's like a replica of you, right? Because that's what videos kind of are, videos and photos are kind of like replicas of us if we look at it in that way. So I feel like this person is watching from a distance and they do idolize you for sure. I think that they put, they have put you a little bit on a pedestal <laughs> or a lot on a pedestal group number one, but um, I think that it comes from a genuine place, like I don't think they're meaning to do that, but um, yeah, they definitely put you on a pedestal and they're watching you from afar, Queen of Swords as well. So they see you as a very free free spirit, yeah, very free spirit, outspoken, um, full of vibrancy and life. And so, yeah, they see your passion and, and they see your truth and they really value that. I think that that is one of the main things that they get value from, whatever you're sharing or whatever it is that you're saying. I feel like they listen and they really value that. Knight of Swords. Yeah, so many swords here. It's all about communication for them. They're very intellectual as well. And they really value information. They value what they can learn in life and, and how they can expand their mind. But yeah, this person definitely, they, they don't feel worthy I just keep getting that like they don't feel worthy they, they have like a complex about this and it's created an imbalance within them so let's ask you know if they were going to come forward what would that look like the world wow they might reach out like because they're coming up from the deep or the depths and kind of reaching towards the light I feel like they see you as the light and if they were going to reach out it would be from like across the world so this could be somebody who lives at a distance from you um, or feels like they do because of how they perceive themselves and their life they feel like you are completely separate from them like you live in a completely different world like you're you're in heaven and they're down in hell and they're just like there's no way, you know, there's no way. But what is this, per what is the value that this person wants to bring you, this card? Ooh, the devil. Okay, <laughs> what? <sighs> okay, if anything, I think this person wants you to free them. Yeah, because they don't, they feel like so much like they don't have anything to offer you that if they were to reach out, it's because they want you to help them. Um, they want, yeah, it's like they want to be free from the shackles that they've placed themselves in. But I feel like you're not the one to free them. First of all, group number one, you're not the one to free them. They have to free themselves. And I think it's important that they realize that. They need to find a way to, Spirit just said, honor themselves. They need to find a way to honor themselves. And it's, it's like you, you can't teach them that or you can't love them enough for that to happen or you can't convince them to do that, you know, whatever 
the relationship dynamic would be it's like no matter what you said or what you did this wouldn't be able to change their view of themselves and and uh it wouldn't be able to change or persuade them to act differently so yeah i just feel like this person they really don't actually know what they need i think they have some idea of what they think they want but they don't actually know what they need and they're reaching for all the wrong things in an attempt to find the right things, but it's it's just leading them kind of further into the hole. It's like pushing them further away from themselves. And it's making it even harder for them to find a way out is kind of what I'm seeing here. So let's find out what you should do, group number one, as the as the person on the other end of this. The tower. Wow. Okay, this is an interesting message because there's two things that I can interpret. Th there's two ways I can interpret this. The first way is to let them sink on their own. And, and it's kind of like sink or swim. And um, so like if let's say, for example, you know this person. Um, or you've known them in the past and you kind of know what I'm talking about. This could be someone you've never met too. But if you know them from in the past, one of the options would be to let them kind of figure out how to swim on their own meaning leave them alone don't try to save them but it's interesting because in the scene that we see here in this card this is when prince eric's ship crashes into the rocks during the storm and he almost drowns but the little mermaid comes in and saves him and that's how they meet so there is a, um, a slight message here about possibly saving this person like maybe there's a part of you that wants to save them it's like you want to offer them your hand. You you want to help them out of the darkness. You want to lift them from the dark up into the light. But again, I feel like this person has to do this on their own. Because you, like I said, you can't convince them to see their own power. You can't convince them to see their own truth. Only they can do that. And they have to act like it. You know, it's it's not even just a belief. It's kind of like they have to... They have to prove that they're worthy through the choices that they make, just like Aladdin did. He wasn't a diamond in the rough because he just had a good heart, but he didn't do anything good. It was because he did good things, because he consistently proved that he had a good heart by what he chose to do, despite, you know, despite the, the lying, <laughs> if we just kind of gloss over that. Um, yeah. So what else? seven of wands i feel like you need to maintain your boundaries group number one so if this person were to reach out to you and kind of go into a little bit of a sob story about you know this is my life and this is how hard it's been and all of that i don't think that you should just be like well too bad for you you know it, it's like i feel like you could you could hold space for them you could listen to them try to understand them but the boundary would be around not trying to save them and understanding that they are a powerful creator being and if this is what they've chosen to experience and that they've chosen that for a reason their soul is using that for some kind of catalyst and and for growth so i feel like the boundary would be you know i i hear you i understand you but you stay over there you can't you can't come into my field and feed off my energy or anything like that because that would not serve you that would just be enabling and you don't want to enable this person. You don't want to swim for them. They need to learn to swim on their own. So I do feel like, yeah, I do feel like this person has, they don't have negative interests, It's but they're coming from a disempowered place. And so the way that they see the world, the way they see themselves, even the way they see you is slightly distorted. And so I think that the best thing for you to do is really just to stay in your own light, keep them at a distance, but be able to hold space indirectly or from a distance if that makes sense you know it's like you wouldn't invite them into your world like being your best friend or your spouse or something or your partner or something like that it's more like you can you can maybe have a conversation with them but then tell them you know this is what you need to do to figure this out and now now go do it you know something like that that's what i feel i do feel this card too though six of wands i feel like I feel like if you just let them be, they will be victorious in some way. 
but they they have to choose that for themselves. It's kind of like they have to face the gauntlet to learn that they are powerful and to come back from the internalized shame and unworthiness that they've clung to as an identity. It's like they've been swimming with the sharks their whole life and you can't change that for them, but you can show them a different way. You can show them a different way, but it's up to them to choose that path for them for themselves on their own. So yeah, I feel like if this person were to approach you, they would probably do it through a message like um, a text or a Snapchat message or a DM or something like that. That's probably how they would reach out. And you may or may not know this person. Either way, I think the response would be, you know, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that that's what you're going through. Or I'm so thankful that you have gained inspiration from me or that you have benefited from knowing me or seeing me or whatever it happens to be, whatever the, whatever the relationship is. But, uh, I'm wishing you all the best and that's it. You know, you you, like leave it there kind of thing. But I think the reason this person is attracted to you in the first place is because you hold this vibration of truth and balance and this person needs to, they do need that in their life, but Again, they need to create that for themselves. They need to learn to to manufacture that in their own life for themselves. So being given it would just keep them dependent and that would be counterproductive. It's like you can give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day or you can teach a man to fish and he'll eat for the rest of his life. So the only other option I see in this circumstance would be to teach this person how to do it and then step back and let them figure it out, you know, giving giving them information and then and then watching from the sidelines. <laughs> yeah. Interesting reading group number one. That is what I see for you. So yeah, I guess I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed the reading and we will see you in the next one. Bye. All right. Hi, group number two. Welcome to your reading. Let's find out what card you chose. Oh, wow. We have the queen of wands and look how beautiful this card is. I just love the sunset there and her hair. So who is coming into your world or who wants to be a part of your world? And what does that mean for you? Well, the queen of wands shows me that somebody here is very passionate. I get, um, a strong sexual energy. I'm not going to lie. That's like the first thing that I'm getting is this person has a lot of, sort of built up energy within them. It could be vital force energy. It could be sexual energy, but I'm feeling like sacral chakra is very heavily active in this person. So they may find you attractive. That could, if we're looking at it literally in that way, they could find you very attractive or they could just feel very passionate about you in some way. It doesn't have to be sexual in nature, but I'm definitely picking up on some passion there. So we have the Knight of Pentacles. This could be an earth sign individual or a fire sign individual. Uh, Earth signs Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo, and fire signs Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. Okay. Okay, yeah, they feel passionate about you, Two of Cups. They have a lot of passion. Um, I do feel like it's romantic. I do feel like it is very serious. Because the Knight of Pentacles is a, is, a, is a more methodical, grounded knight. He's not one to jump into something willy-nilly. So this person does have a lot of passion, but it's like a mature passion and they want to present something long-term and stable for you, whether that's a relationship or, or something else. But I feel like because there's so much sexual passion here and potentially love, this person probably wants a relationship with you. Okay, let's find out like more information about this person. We have the sun card. This came out in group number one as well. And um, it's completely different kind of context and reading for you guys. But uh, again, this could be somebody who has a fire sign, specifically Leo, because that's what the sun card is ruled by. This could be somebody who wants to marry you. Yeah, it's like they want to make an offer to you. They want to at least like have a commitment or a committed relationship is what I just heard. Yeah, they want a committed relationship with you. Okay, this person is very passionate. Yep. 
very passionate ace of wands they want to start something with you they are very curious about you they they feel a lot of warmth from you as well so there may even be reciprocated passion this could be somebody that you know already um because i feel like this would not be somebody who's never met you you know or just seen you online like in like we were seeing in group one i feel like in in this case for you group number two this person knows you and you know them and they they feel strongly towards you like that's the best way that i can describe it is they feel strongly towards you there's a lot of sexual attraction um and yeah they want to have a commitment with you in, in some way i feel this card as well oh the devil card that did come up in group number one as well so maybe these two readings are connected but i don't feel like it like this feels very different than group one energetically but oh okay yeah it is definitely different so in this case this person is yeah they're just very sexually attracted to you <laughs> and i don't really do like a lot of sexual type readings and stuff like that but um since we're trying we're kind of channeling jalissa's re Jalissa's vibe in this reading because these are her cards and this was prompted or inspired by the gifts that she sent as um from the the giveaway that she was doing she does do a lot of like 18 plus their feelings for you sexual stuff so i feel like that's kind of why this is coming up <laughs> that's so funny but yeah um they have a lot of sexual attraction to you that's like the devil card where it's it's very lustful but at the same time i think that this person is very grounded realistic practical and it's not just lust i think that's part of the equation here but i do see a lot of um a lot of more practical energy as well and a desire for commitment yeah there's a lot of desire and a, and it's desire for commitment yeah they want a long-term commitment commitment with you okay i see this card and this card so let me get them both out here judgment okay i hate to keep bringing it up but that did come up in group one like i said these are very different readings but it's interesting when the, the same cards come up back to back like that and the page of swords yeah that did come up in their reading as well maybe go check that out if you feel called but these could be completely separate messages so just take it how it resonates i feel like this person has been thinking about you a lot that's what i'm getting they've been thinking about you a lot they've been wanting to say how they feel but they've been holding back and i think the reason is because they're not sure if you reciprocate mm -hmm. yeah they feel like you don't they they feel like you don't feel the same way let me see do you queen of cups yeah i think you do in this case with the queen of cups this is it does feel like reciprocal love um yeah so i do feel like if they were to approach you there's a high likelihood that you would say yes to this person um but they maybe they haven't kind of gauged that yet or they just don't feel like it's the right time let me see six of pentacles yeah i feel like they are kind of yeah they're waiting for the perfect moment is kind of what it feels like they're waiting to they're waiting to approach you because they want to make sure that this this connection gets off on the right foot like i said they 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 are they're in it for the long haul so they want to make sure that things are going to be very stable and that they have something stable to offer you i don't think that this is the kind of person who comes with no plan I, i'm getting virgo energy very heavily here even though we did have that those fire signs and leo come up i feel like this person is a virgo or somebody who's just like very planning and organized oriented like they want to do it the right way they are very i keep using that word practical but that's what i keep getting this person is very practical and they don't let their emotions sway them like they are the master of their emotions even if they feel this intense passion and they want to come forward it's like they're not the type of person to act on emotions alone they use those as fuel to take action in productive ways this is a this is a, like a boss level person they're probably very successful in their life i'm getting like king triton vibes you know they, they're like a ruler in their life feels like emperor you know energy where male or female they're just they've they've got their shit together and they really know how to control themselves they're very self-disciplined that's the word i'm looking for yeah they're very disciplined and they want to make sure that if they do come to you kind of initiating this relationship they want to have a very clear 
offer on the table or they want to have something stable that they can provide for you. Um, okay. So let's see what the relationship would bring if you two were to connect. Okay. We have the five of swords. Interesting. I think I need more information. Can I get a clarifier on the five of swords, please? The hanged man. Hmm. Yeah, I just feel like they're biding their time. Like they're not in a rush. And the five, don't worry about the five of swords because the message that I don't, I don't always take the literal meanings of the cards. I'm an intuitive style reader, so I know all of the, the traditional meanings, but I, I go with what I actually feel rather than just what's there. And what I'm seeing here is actually that they they always have a plan in mind. Like I said, they're, they're a planner, they're an organizer, they like to be prepared. And in this case, they know that there's time. And so they're kind of waiting until the perfect moment to approach you. They feel like they've lost their voice at this point, because I think they kind of want to master their emotions. I think that's part of it. Half of it is that they want to come with a stable offer. And the other half is that they feel, um, Oh, they, Spirit just gave me the message that they don't trust themselves to approach you just yet. It's like they've restrained themselves because they don't want to get ahead of themselves. Like they don't want to fall head over heels and lose their capacity for good judgment. You know, it's like they want to do this slow and do it the right way. And they know that if they were even to kind of do a little bit, they might go a little too overboard, something like that. And then they might scare you away or they might, you know, something, something might happen. They're just worried about the outcome. So I think that's why they're kind of just biding their time and waiting. This is a very patient person. And like I said, very, very disciplined. Um, so I think that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. The lovers. Yeah, because they want they want marriage, like they want commitment. And if it's not marriage, they just, they want to be with you long-term. They want to have a stable relationship. So they really don't want to rush things and then have it fall apart. I think they've had that experience in the past. Now that I'm kind of feeling into it a bit more, I think this person has experienced things falling apart before because they rushed into things or because they started things prematurely and then they kind of devolved over time. So this is the type of person who they really yeah they, they don't rush at all they're very slow and very patient which I think that if you know this person and you want them to approach you you might be frustrated with that <laughs> you might be a little bit impatient because you're like okay come on let's go and this person's like no not yet not yet um hmm I feel like you might feel like you're pressed for time and they are feeling and they're kind of taking their time because of the reasons that that I've mentioned but you I think I think you may feel a little frustrated because you want the same thing they want but they're not really but I think you want them to make the the first move something like that yeah the, I heard the word gesture, so it's like you you want them to make a gesture so that you kind of have an idea of where they stand. That's what it feels like. Okay. Hmm. Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, you're just waiting. You're you're impatiently waiting. I think, uh, or patiently. You could be patiently waiting, but I I feel like there is a hint of impatience there, or frustration, or just anticipation at the very least, right? Anticipatory energy is probably the more positive way of, of saying that. And the eight of pentacles as well. But you really want to build something with this person. I feel like you know who they are and you've, you've been interested in them for a while is kind of what it feels like. And I feel like maybe you're the type of person who does tend to rush into things and just do them and kind of try and fail and, and learn as you go. Whereas this person is more of like a let me perfect it first and then put it into practice. So you're very opposite <laughs> in that regard. If it's reversed, then take it as it resonates. But um, 
I feel one person is very practical, very slow going and wants to prepare. And one person is very uh, emotional and, and likes to just go with the flow, doesn't like to plan things and likes to just see how they turn out. There's, there's less attachment to the outcome for the go with the flow person. And there's more attachment to the outcome long term for the, the more uh, grounded person. <laughs> So yeah, it, this is an interesting reading group number two. I feel like they, yeah, I feel like they want to approach you with an offer. So let's see what, the, what the situation would be around that. Ten of wands. I think maybe part of, part of why they're preparing so hard and they're so perfectionistic is because they actually subconsciously have a lot of fear or resistance. And that perfectionism is like a way for them to try and kind of master that fear and that hesitation. So it's like, if I'm fully prepared, then I'll feel safe to, you know, speak my truth or voice this or make this grand gesture or something like that. Nine of wands. Yeah, because they've been through th some things in the past that left them feeling a little bit less than confident in love is what I feel. They've really been through it, and so they've kind of earned the right to be a little bit hesitant and to take things slow, and I think that's actually the healthiest thing for them to do, but you may be feeling differently, so let's see how you feel about this or what this would bring in your life. The Hierophant. Okay, so I think you're actually quite understanding, and you want this long-term commitment as well, so maybe you are being patient about it, but... I feel like it's it's less like you're I feel like you're not as willingly patient as they are. <laughs> I just keep getting that. The star. It's like, yeah, you want something to happen right now. Yeah, cuz that's the, the that's the the scene that she goes, "I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know something starting right now. Watch and you'll see. Someday I'll be part of your world six of swords yeah so the, i feel like you really it's like why won't eric just kiss the girl come on hurry up kiss the girl you know that's kind of the vibe i'm getting here that's that's the scene in the in the lagoon right so you are like hurry up and kiss me i'm on a time limit here i've only got three days or until, until the sea witch like owns my soul <laughs> kind of thing but this person is dragging their feet and they're not they're not making that grand gesture. They're not, you know, voicing how they feel or proposing or asking you out or whatever it is. So, but I feel like this is happening, right? It, because it is mutual. Like you feel this way, they feel this way. So it's really only a matter of time until this unfolds, especially if you kind of give them hints that you're open to it and they give you hints that they're also feeling you know, the same way. I think that, uh, that that would help it kind of move along. You know, it's like when Ariel, she really, she bats her eyes and, you know, she leans into it, you know? And, and so I think that, I think that that would help to kind of give, encourage this person to, um, to come forward in this way, make them feel a little bit more secure in the outcome, because I think that's what they're very attached to. They, they want to make sure that the outcome is going to be positive. They don't want to get hurt again. They've been there. They've done that. They're carrying that burden. And if, if you guys are on the same page, I think that if you hinted or if you kind of, even if you, like, you don't have to say anything, but maybe you just make it kind of obvious that you like them and uh, that would be enough to get them to to come forward and to to do something or say something because I do feel like this is a person who likes you and you like them or at least you're interested in them and there's definitely a potential here for a committed relationship that would be very happy and very loving yeah very loving mm -hmm. healthy I think it would be a very healthy relationship because you guys are kind of opposites, but you know what they say, opposites attract. So I think it would be a really nice balance. Yeah, yeah. It would be very healing, right? With the star card here, I feel like both both people would benefit from this relationship. Both people would feel renewed from this relationship. I think the, the person who's hesitant would feel 
a sense of safety. I feel like the person who is impatient would feel a little bit more able to trust things to unfold in a slower, more methodical way. I think it would just be a really good combo. Yeah, it's like the free spirit and the 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 organized planning one. I don't we don't really have a a phrase for that, do we? Like the practical the the grounded one. Yeah, it's like the grounded one and the free spirit. And I think that that's a good combo. <laughs> so I'll leave it at that. Group number two, that is what I see for you. This person has a lot of love for you. Very, very passionate. And they're trying to master their emotions to come forward in the right way. So I think uh, it's it's not like the ball is in your court. I think the ball is definitely in their court. But you can you can kind of wave from your end of the court and go, oh, hey, like I'm open to you passing me the ball or something like that, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, so... I hope you enjoyed the reading. Thank you so much for being here, guys, and we'll see you in the next reading. Bye. All right. Hi, group number three. Welcome to your reading. Let's find out what card you chose. You have the Knight of Wands. Okay, so I just got this feeling of jumping for joy. So I feel like this person is really excited. This, this person who's coming into your world. Let's find out who they are and, and what they're kind of bringing here. Queen of Pentacles. Wow, what a beautiful Queen of Pentacles she is too. Look at that. So this person is really excited about a financial venture. I feel like this is a potential business partner or somebody who's in your field. Yeah, this is, and they're they're very excited. They see your talent. That's what I'm getting here. Yeah, they want to manifest something with you big time. They want to present you with an offer of uh, like a business offer of some kind, like a potential project that you can work on together that you can create. Yeah, I feel like they want to manifest something with you financially, creatively. And they have a lot to offer. I feel like they are very successful in their own right. And they like, they're very, they're very driven by their creative passions. So they have a lot of pursuits that they have underway. They kind of have a lot on the go. They may be juggling a lot, but I think they do it really well because they're a boss and they know how to delegate. They're very grounded and practical. I feel like they have a lot of money. They're very good with money and they're good at making money quickly because they follow their passion and they understand that that will always lead them to manifesting more. So it's like they, if they have an idea, they're the type of person who puts it into action. They don't sit on it and kind of hum and haw about, you know, oh, should I do this or should I not? They start it, they finish it, they put it out there right away. And that's why they've built an empire or um, a business for themselves that is successful because if they say they're going to do something, they do. They follow through and they're very good at that. They are a master manifester and they want to offer something to you. They're very excited about something that you can do. It's like they've seen your work or they've, you gave them an idea or something, or maybe, yeah, something about like an idea. They have this idea and they're like, they can't get it out of their mind. They're, they're the type of person who gets kind of fixated on things like they 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 almost get like obsessed a little bit with their work but in a good way but that's what makes them so driven and so successful um they've got like the energy of a billionaire i don't think that they actually are i do think they're well off but i don't think they're like a billionaire but they've got that sort of drive of like a highly successful business person because they be they become so obsessed with ideas and projects and they literally put their all into it like they will make investments that may not be you know it's like they they don't really temper things like they go all in you know they're the type of person who if they're playing poker and they have a good hand and they're really excited about it and they kind of read the room and they feel intuitively that they've got the best hand they're just going to go all in they don't hold back and uh i think they hedge their bets a little bit to make sure that they're not going to go belly up <laughs> but they they definitely um they are one to take risks especially when they intuitively feel something and and then and they're driven towards it i feel like this person is spiritual 
So they're not just about business. I feel like they are very spiritual, but they're very grounded and practical too. So it's like a, a really nice combination because they have balance between those two things. Okay, let's see what else. We have nine of wands. Uh, what I'm getting from this is actually the spotlight. I feel like the spotlight is going to be on you. They might be shining the spotlight onto you. And you know that you know what I'm getting from this card. This is so funny. What they're showing me in my mind is an image of the teacher calling on a student student in class out of nowhere, and they're just like, "What about you? What's your idea for for your the upcoming project?" And you're kind of sitting there in your seat, like, "Uh." <laughs> And then you have to kind of like think on the spot. So they do kind of put you on the spot a little bit because they, they like to, I think they like to push people like that because it can sometimes spark creativity. You know, sometimes when we're put on the spot is when we can improvise and, and be the most creative. So I feel like this person might put you on the spot a little bit when they, they might reach out to you and yeah, look at that. There's a spotlight in this one too. Yeah. I feel like they are in the spotlight and they're used to being in the spotlight. So when they shine it on you, you're kind of a little bit shook, but they know that it's going to, it's going to inspire something. And that's why they want to, to, to reach out to you or to put you in that spotlight is to get you to, uh, to improvise and to come up with something creative. Yeah. They want you to come up with something creative. Six of Wands. And I feel like this, if you were to collaborate with this person, it would be very successful because I just, I get this feeling that maybe, maybe you are a little bit timid with your creativity group number three, but I feel like this person sees a lot of drive in you and ambition and creative juice that they want to capitalize on. And I, it would be a win-win situation because this person would be able to invest or to collaborate in this way. So they would benefit, but then it would also benefit, benefit you. And it would be very mutually successful. Um, but I feel like there's a little bit of maybe like shock from you a little bit you're kind of shocked that this, that this person would be interested in working with you or yeah collaborating on a project or that they want to invest in you in this way it just feels like you're a little bit taken aback or or caught off guard but ultimately if you're if you're able to kind of recover a little recover quickly from that you know um i think you'll be able to yeah, you'll be able to respond with something that will spark interest for this person because they're already interested. Like they're not even, they're kind of just testing you a little bit. I think that they are very, they're kind of bold in that way, you know, where they're like, they want to see what you're made of. And it's not to judge you or anything like that. It's literally just to kind of put you through your paces a bit. Um, but they already know they want to work with you. So no matter what you said when they put you in the spotlight, they still want to work with you because they already know that that you have this idea, you have this gift or this talent or this skill that they want to capitalize on. So I think that if they do put you on this in the spotlight in, in this very sort of abrupt way, it's really just to kind of gauge your your character a little bit. <laughs> they just want to see how you're going to respond. It's kind of like a little just bit of a fun experiment for them. They're so funny. Yeah, eight of wands. They just want to, they kind of want to see what you're made of. Yeah, they, they, they want to, they want to get an idea of what you're capable of. And especially when you're put under pressure like that, but, but they're not going to put you under pressure the whole time. That's just kind of like an initial gimmick that they use to see the best and the worst of a person because, um, that's how they gauge, you know, how they, who they want to work with really but they they see a potential in you that they don't see in a lot of people is what I'm getting and it's magic like they see magic in you and they are a magician so it takes one to know one and they feel like this is very rare like they don't find people like you very often and so that's why they're singling you out and that's why they're shining the spotlight on you and approaching in this sort of abrupt type of ways because they see this magic and they're like oh I gotta snap that up because you know who knows who who's the next person who's going to see this person and realize that that's a walking million dollar bill right there <laughs> like seriously they see it and they're like oh crap someone else is going to see that this treasure box is just wandering around out here like who why has nobody scooped this up I think they're a little bit kind of taken 
taken aback at the fact that you're not even further ahead than you are. I feel like they, they just see like a huge box of treasure in you. Like they're, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like they see that this is, this is like big fortune right here. And they're not really, they are, they are very money oriented. Like that's definitely, they're a business person. They have to be, but because they are spiritual, because they are intuitive, it's not only about the money. Like they're not ruthless like that, you know? It's more so um, money is just the cherry on top. Money is the side. Money is the... Money is kind of like the means to an end to getting these projects or this magic out to the world or, or to creating whatever this is and, and sharing it. And then it just creates more money, you know? So, And it's also about their passion. They just really love what they do. I feel like even if money wasn't involved, they would still do this because they love it. But they're just so good at it that it made them a lot of money. And they know how to spot people who can make them money. And you're one of those people who can make them money. <laughs> and they love that. So, wow, yeah. The hermit. I feel like you might be very un I just keep getting this feeling that you're not used to the spotlight and yeah they do they put you on the spot a bit because they want to see it's almost like that I'm getting this feeling of like um a music producer who works with very high level artists and they see you or hear you or something you, you like come into their radar or something like that and they're like, holy shit, that person's an undiscovered gem. And then they, they call you up or you have an appointment with them or something. And they're like, okay, sing for me. And you're just standing there like, wait, what? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, show me what you got. And they're all just like kind of chilled out, like leaned back, feet up. And, and you're like, uh, okay. <laughs> you start singing a little bit, but really they're already like, yeah, this person's, this person's got it. You know, they've got it factor, even though maybe you don't feel like you do maybe you've been hiding in the background or you, you don't, you, you only this, in this example, that person would only sing in the shower or the car. Like they don't show that part of them. Um, but somehow this person heard of you or saw you and they're like, yeah, that's it. That is so cool. 10 of wands. I feel like you are very nervous about whatever this person is offering to you. Like not nervous because you think that it's a bad offer, but nervous because it's very much out of your comfort zone. <laughs> That's what it feels like. It's just very out of your comfort zone. And it does challenge you a little bit to uh, face your fears, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's like, are you going to, are you going to face your fear and go after your passion? Or are you going to let your fear keep you in this hermit mode of staying behind the scenes? Because I feel like this is the type of partnership or re business relationship that would really call you out of your comfort zone and put you in the spotlight in some way, either literally or figuratively. They're going to put you in the spotlight. And so it's kind of up to you. Do, do you want that? Are you ready for that? Can you handle that? Because this is the type of person who can and will make it happen. So let's see what, you, what you're what you going to do, group number three. Oh, okay. I do feel this one as well. And those ones, okay. And that one. Oh, well, more, more, more. Keep bringing more in. Okay, let's see. We'll look at these ones first because they came out and they, they were the ones that fell right on the table nine of cups oh i love this yes i think that this is a yes i think that you are going to really really be happy with what this person can offer you and the life that they give you i feel like you know this is the scene in the little mermaid when she's in the palace for the first time and she's having this very luxurious bath and they give her all these new clothes i feel like this is the type of kind of rags to riches story where this person takes you from one environment and puts you into a completely different one that you're not used to and you're just like a kid in a candy store a little bit you know you're like wow look at this wow look at that you know it's like you're just having fun with it it feels very innocent but very very happy very happy and i think it's going to lead to a lot of fulfillment for you yeah Ace of Cups, you definitely, you are going to love this offer and you're really going to enjoy what it brings into your life. That's what I see. Like this person is offering you 
happiness on a silver platter, even though it might challenge you to get out of your comfort zone, I really feel like you are going to love this four of wands and you're going to be very successful at it very successful for a long time is what i just said you're going to be highly celebrated so in the example of the singer or whatever it is right like this music executive spots you they get you you know in for uh, a demo or something like that you they've already committed to you in their mind but you don't know that so you're nervous and whatever but then you really kind of blow them away and you show them what you can do on the spot and they're just they kind of double down and they're like yeah this is this is it they go all in with you they really invest in you they give you everything that they can offer and then you know you become very successful in this field you know so let's say you you get a record deal or you um you go platinum or something. Obviously, this is a very, very hyperbolic example. I, I don't know if it's specifically that, but that's just kind of what's coming to mind. So downgrade it for your circumstances or whatever your situation is. But uh, that's that's the theme, right? That's the archetype of it. Now let's take a look at these other three cards. Ace of Pentacles. Yep, there we go. That's the offer. They're gonna say here we. This is what this is like the down payment, or this is the offer, or this is the idea, and this is what I'm willing to invest. And um, Three of Wands, I think you're you're going to survey the offer and you're going to, or no, actually, they just corrected me, Spirit corrected me. They said that this this person sends you this offer or they, it's like almost like they give you, yeah, they're showing me somebody, you know, in movies, that trope where they write down the number on the piece of paper and then slide it across the table. That's what they're showing me. And then you, you this is the Three of Wands is you looking at it and kind of saying, okay, can I have a little while to think about this? Um because you're, I think maybe somebody who, yeah, you're not used to this type of attention or this type of offer. So you're kind of like, let me think about it, even though your instinct at first is to say yes right away. I think it is rational to, of course, maybe like if it's a contract or something like that to read it over, you know, make sure that you're doing your due diligence. But uh, yeah, this person's kind of watching from a distance as you decide and, and waiting and anticipating what, what you'll say. Um, but they're patient. They're not going to rush anything because they know that you know if this is going to work it'll work in due time and seven of wands oh interesting you might come back with a counter offer you might you might have some uh specifications like okay i'll do this on on these conditions type of thing um and i do feel like there's a contractual agreement that's involved here because it is a business deal right so i do feel like there's something that is of a legal nature and that's why first of all you take time to assess the offer and secondly why you come back with not necessarily a counter offer but i think that you come back with like uh yeah some stipulations that are relevant to you that that are going to cover your own ass and i think that that's the wise or the the, the smart thing to do especially given the circumstances with this person coming you know out of left field and offering you this thing whatever it is that's a little bit out of your wheelhouse possibly or out of your comfort zone at the very least but i really see a lot of success here group number three so if, if this person is somebody that comes forward and offers you something i would seriously consider it because it is going to provide a lot of magic and fulfillment and creative passion I, I see just so much creative passion and this new beginning is going to be very fruitful for both of you it's a win-win situation because i feel like you get to pursue your creative passion and and to receive the the experience and the support that you need to be able to do that and and this person really benefits because they get residuals off of of your success so you both win in this in this exchange really cool very very cool Oh, I love this reading, group number three. I think yours is my favorite so far. Don't tell the other groups. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I see for you. So I think I'll just leave it at that. This looks like a great offer. And I think this person really sees the best in you. And they're right. They're right to see the best in you because you've got something special. You've got the it factor. You've got the magic. Oh my God, I just heard that song. I've got the magic in me. <laughs> yeah everything i touch it turns into gold yeah it's like you you've got the midas touch but you haven't known how to use it and this person is a master midas touch manifester and so they're like oh yeah let's work together let's create a, an empire of gold <laughs> 
so go for it group three trust your trust your gut here you're gonna feel it and it'll feel right all right so i will leave it at that thank you so much for being here i hope you enjoyed the reading i certainly did and we will see you in the next bye all right hi group number four welcome to your reading last but not least let's find out what you chose okay you have the page of wands so who is this person that is coming into your world or wants to be a part of your world and what are they bringing in? Now, the first thing I'm seeing with the Page of Wands is that this is someone who is excitable. That's the feeling I'm getting. They're very excitable. They have a very childlike nature. And I did want to mention that when I was pre-shuffling the deck, this card came out and it felt very insistent energetically like it wanted to be here so i'm going to mention the empress actually i think i'll put her on the table here as well because she wants to be here so badly but uh yeah so there's something about i'm almost getting like mother and child so this could even be a child that's entering your life maybe you're having a child or you're adopting a child I don't know. I'm getting this energy of the, there's a childlike energy here. It could be an actual child or it could, it could be a person who's just very innocent in that way. Very exuberant, enthusiastic. Um, yeah, just very passionate like that. And then there's this energy that's very grounded and very nurturing and motherly. Interesting. Okay, let's get some more information on this because I'm very curious to see. Ooh, the high priestess powerful energy with the empress and the high priestess here this is like very divine feminine and that's what i mean it's like the divine feminine birthing something queen of cups more divine feminine wow and i want to put it over here usually i, I start from the left and go to the right but i want to put it over here because i feel like these two energies are kind of connected the, the queen of cups and the high priestess do have a lot in common they're both very psychic intuitive emotional beings connected to the spirit realm connected to the subconscious um yeah able to see beyond the veil okay what is the context here knight of cups more water energy Th this does feel like it goes over next to the page of wands so yeah it, it feels like this person is very like a young energy maybe an adolescent or a teen who's very very like maybe this is an, a niece or nephew or something like that and they really look up to you whoever this person is they see you as like a mother figure a father figure they see you as um, a role model let's just say it that way they see you as a role model of some kind and they really look up to you yeah this could be somebody who's related to you or somebody who's not but it happens to be younger younger than you and that's why they look up to you in that way yeah they're definitely younger than you um because this is all young energy knights and pages that's that's this person's and i feel like this is the the person and then this is you yeah so why is this person coming into uh group four's life nine of wands I feel like they have a question to ask you. That's what I'm getting from that card. So random, but I feel like they have a question. And it's like you're the you're the one that they trust to answer it because they look up to you. They see you as a role model. They want to be like you when they grow up. And they they want to hear what you have to say. Hmm. Okay, let's see how like let's see your side of the equation here. 4 of wands. Yeah, I did see this card. Queen of Wands, wow. Hmm. I feel like I want to put one more in here. Seven of Wands as well. Okay. I feel like you're I feel like you might be teaching this person about boundaries, or you might be teaching this person about this younger person about um how, like safety and security how how to create that in their life how to how to be stable it's kind of like you're setting an example for them through your behavior about how how to live a stable life that's kind of a very yeah emotionally stable grounded life and it's through having healthy boundaries that 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 is that is that is possible hmm yeah i just feel like this person really looks up to you this individual, however you know them, 
they just really they see you as like a goddess <laughs> or a god if you're a male they just really really look up to you and i think that's so beautiful because they're very innocent uh, let's see what what this relationship holds here seven of pentacles yeah i feel like they they want to learn from you i think you want to teach them hmm you want to help them grow is kind of what I'm getting here. I do feel this one, actually. Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, to help them mature in some way. It's like maybe they're going through a pivotal time in their life and they just need a little bit of direction and guidance and, and you're the one that they turn to for that. And at least in this particular area of their life, maybe not you know, for everything, but for whatever this is, maybe it's like a spiritual thing that they're going through. Maybe this is a, not necessarily a younger person. Maybe this is someone who's of the same age or maybe even older but they're going through something in their life that they've never been through before and so they're inexperienced in this area and you have experience in this area so you can kind of help them to to get through it a little bit more stable like maybe they're going through a spiritual awakening for the first time and you're very well versed in in the spiritual realms like you're very knowledgeable you're the high priestess and so you can guide them in that way so take it as it resonates because that's that's the feeling I'm getting, but it could be an actual younger person. The fool. Yeah, the, this is a younger person for sure. The fool is the, the beginning of any journey. So whether it's whether it's the younger person or uh, it's the beginning of that spiritual journey or, or this new area era of their life, something like that. It's like they're very fresh, very innocent. They've never done this before. They don't have any experience. And I think that's why they're turning to you because they see that you've mastered this or you're very skilled or talented in it. And so they ask you for advice or for guidance or for information at the very least. They're just looking for, you know, they want to see what you, what you know and, and they're very curious. Like I just get this innocent curiosity, like a, a kid who's in their, what is it like two and three years old when kids start to ask why? I remember when my little brother, my little brother's seven years younger than me. And I remember when he was a kid, he went through that stage and literally anything you told him, he'd be like, why? But why? But why? <laughs> and it's like, because <laughs> at, at some point you're just like tired of answering. So you're just like, because, because I said so. <laughs> But yeah, I feel like you're the type of person who's very patient and emotionally able to hold space for this person and to teach them whatever this is through your modeling of the behavior, just through like how you are as a person or through the information you're sharing with them. The star, they see you as a star. You are the star in their life. Like a child sees their mother, right? It's like they're just in awe of you like wow you are the be all end all you are amazing and you have all this knowledge and it, it's like they'll get there too you know they're they're just at that phase where they haven't really fully self-discovered yet but they will get there too and they will be that for someone else and and you were at that stage before too so it's like it all is kind of coming full circle here right wheel of fortune full circle um and you're just at a different, more advanced life stage than they are, either physically or spiritually or mentally or emotionally, whatever it is. And you can really share your wisdom with them. I think that's beautiful. Yeah, look at that. Ten of Pentacles. You're sharing your wisdom with them because you've lived a long life of, of and you have all this wisdom and experience to share. You know, at least in this area, even if you're not like an older person, this person is definitely younger than you. And so they benefit a lot from the wisdom that you have and the experience that you've gained. So you're helping them to build a solid foundation for the future. You could, you could also be helping them to heal something within themselves or to learn how to create stability for themselves going forward, especially emotionally. I keep getting that message of boundaries too, like learning how to assert themselves, teaching them confidence, teaching them um, how to emotionally regulate through compassion and empathy or holding space for this person. Yeah, this is really cool. This is such a beautiful relationship I feel from you and this individual. So, hmm, what else can we ask in this reading? Because I feel like this this reading out of all of them was the most straightforward. Like I got the message right away. We know the dynamic. So maybe I think the only other question I can ask is like, when is this person coming in? And, and what do they need? Well, we've got the page of pentacles again. I was just showing that because it was on the bottom of the deck. Uh, so I would say probably... 
fairly soon. Let me see. The sun. If this person is not already in your life, I feel like they would be coming in within a day or two. That's kind of what I'm getting. Yeah. Because you offer them something. And they highly value you and your opinion. Yeah, they look up to you so much. This is so sweet. It's so sweet. Two of Wands. And you feel like a little bit of a guardian for them. So this could be somebody who... This could be a child. You know, I feel like it is someone who's already in your life. I don't feel like this is someone you don't know. I feel like this is either one of your children or a niece or nephew, maybe a younger sibling or uh, a younger individual who you've worked with before. Maybe it's like a client or a friend's child. I don't know. It's like, it's somebody you know. They're in your circle. You've you've been with them yeah you've you've hung out with them before or you you know you've known them from before but anyway yeah this person you you love guiding them and protecting them as well like you really like to teach them things and show them the ropes of life kind of thing i feel like i feel like you're very good at that naturally so of course they 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 lean on you for those things. Of course, they gravitate towards you for that type of wisdom because you're just not only really good at it, but you have a lot of it. So yeah, let's see what else. King of Wands. I feel like you're a protector for them because they showed me Sebastian here in this card and then the yeah look at that the eight of swords is on the bottom of the deck so i feel like you protect them in some way because aquaman is like the guardian of the sea and then um sebastian is the guardian for ariel so i do feel like you're a guardian for this person maybe that's why i was getting like adopted or something like that maybe you're like their legal guardian but not their parent or maybe you are their parent but and that's what that's why you're their guardian. I don't know. I'm just getting like a guardian energy. You're a guardian for this person. Huh. And if this is not a child or a younger person, then it's like you're an older soul and they're a younger soul and you are kind of like a guardian for them like you've been a parent to them in previous lifetimes and that's why they naturally gravitate towards you in that in that role because you've done that before at soul level and so it feels familiar yeah i'm getting that you may have been a father to them in a previous lifetime and then in this lifetime you're like a mother to them if you're a female or if you're a male roles reversed it because we switch genders from lifetime to lifetime that's super common um interesting interesting okay Mm, yeah this one on top complete wow so yeah i feel like you've been through many lifetimes with this person that's what i'm getting and you help them to transform you help to teach them you protect them you are a guardian and uh um like a teacher or a role model for them and you help you help learn you help them to learn to walk on their own two feet basically like every every time that you guys come together in these lifetimes you help them to complete something you help them to mature and get to the next level in their life so if they started out at the beginning of the journey you help them to transform and to learn and to progress and then they get to this level of completion where they've they've fully matured into the next level of their life yeah wow this is so cool and that that would be like the role of a parent right you bring them into this world they start out with you you raise them you teach them all these things and then you send them when they're ready out on their way and they go and become an adult and an independent individual so that's kind of the same thing that i'm seeing here so it could definitely be a parent-child relationship um or that type of archetype yeah that type of uh dynamic this is beautiful. I love this. It feels so loving and there's so much appreciation between you two. Yeah, I just feel a lot of nurturing. Very nur like you're a very nurturing person. This person is really benefiting from that. Like they 
they are growing so fast. Like they go through growth spurts whenever they're around you or whenever you teach them something, they really benefit and shine from it. It's like you infuse them with light and, and it helps them to expand their own light. It's really beautiful what they're showing me uh, clairvoyantly. And even in the cards, you can kind of see that here with, uh, what is her name? I can't remember. I think she's like Ariel's little sister or something. Or no, she's Ariel's daughter. Sorry. Yeah, that's Ariel's daughter. And yeah, she's like in the sunbeams and same thing with the sun here. Yeah, so this could be a child for sure. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it, group number four. I, I mean, yeah, it was a pretty straightforward reading. It's a little shorter than the other two or three, I should say, but I feel like we kind of covered the bases here and this is what I see. So I will leave it at that. This is a beautiful connection. I think this person really adores you and you adore them it's just so mutual and sweet and innocent so yeah i absolutely love it thank you so much for being here group number four i hope you enjoyed the reading and that it helped in some way thank you so much for supporting my work here on the channel and we will see you in the next reading bye